What is up, you guys? This is Mini Superheroes Today. Hey guys, Jonathan here, aka Mini Superheroes Today, getting ready to head to the airport to head to Steel City Con up in Monroeville, Pennsylvania, which is just south of Pittsburgh and is actually the area where I grew up in. So I'll get to go visit my folks. Haven't seen my mom in four months. Can you believe that? And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time hunting for toys and getting to go to the old stomping ground. So come along and come see where I grew up. So after getting off the plane, my mom surprised me and took my dad and I to a place called Coupe de Ville. They had amazing food there, but also some really cool arcade games, some pinball machines, and even bowling where I beat my dad by one point. It was a lot of fun, really cool, and then we headed to a place called Ides Entertainment to do some toy hunting. Well, it was an awesome first day, and here's everything I got from Ides Entertainment in Pittsburgh. That was a cool store to walk through. Obviously, some really cool Elvis 45s and Beach Boys. I know that it's not Lego, so we'll get on with that, but I do have to show you this. This is a sliver of a bed sheet used by Elvis. It was just too weird to leave behind, and all of this stuff was like 60% off, so that's pretty cool. All right, Steel City Con in the morning. Let's get at it. Got a lot of unique stuff. Got all kinds of stuff down here, all boxed. Hard to say if they're complete, loose, sealed. Tough to say. All kinds of different eras, too. That one's pretty smashed. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything kind of older in here. That's kind of older. Don't necessarily need it, though. Don't really see anything I need, but still always fun to dig. One of the best booths for rare LEGO minifigs at this con was my friends over at Main Street Geeks. Now, they had some awesome figures from Marvel, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. Great selection at pretty good prices, too. I picked up a few things here that I'll show you a little bit later in the video, but you just never know when you go to a con. Sometimes there's no LEGO stuff, sometimes there's tons, and it's always great when you come across a booth like this that has a great selection. All right, inside at Steel City Con, this place is hopping already. Come along, let's see what we can find. Hopefully some good Lego stuff, but uh, we'll see what's up. Found 
on some really cool store displays. We've got DC Superhero Girls here. It's always cool to see these sets preserved the way you would have seen them in like Target or Walmart or something. Super cool monster fighters display. Got the crazy scientist set back there, the ghost train, then some Nexo Knights down here. You guys know I love the store displays. All right, well, I just had a nice last minute find here. Of course, I'll show you that during the haul section, but uh, day one was really awesome here and it was a lot of fun. So we're gonna wrap things up, go grab some lunch and go see what else the area has to offer. Well, I know what it has to offer because I'm from here. <laughs> if you're ever in the Pittsburgh area, Burgatory is the place to go. Giant burgers, awesome shakes, tough to beat, man. So good. About to stop at the Flea Teak here in Adamsburg, Pennsylvania. I came here pretty much my whole life growing up. A lot of great memories and a lot of great finds. So let's see what I find today. giant minifig. If I was better at customizing, imagine using this as like the base for a giant man minifigure or something. It's pretty cool. It's 12 bucks, but uh, I'm not a big enough Ninjago fan, so I'll leave her for somebody. Look at this though. I spotted it. <laughs> There's some Bionicle or something right there. Only four bucks on that. Not too bad. Ever hear of American bricks? These were like kind of Lego knockoffs from the 60s. Not super cool, but an interesting footnote in history. Not worth 11 bucks though. Well, in case Lego isn't your fancy, there's always a lock of blocks. <laughs> Right, so it's the end of day one and this was my haul definitely some cool stuff i'll kind of work with the non-lego stuff just to get it out of the way this is an extreme jumper from spider-man in 2002 i love that green goblin one but basically it's just a parachute toy pretty cool that it's still in the packaging this is made by my friend arsenal uh they do some really cool prop replicas and of course it's the holy grail from indiana jones so i chose wisely on that one here we've got a complete new goblin figure Figure from Spider-Man 3. It's really hard to find him with the mask and all his accessories. So for five bucks, that was definitely a really good deal. He's actually probably worth closer to 30 or maybe even 40 as of this video. Speaking of valuable Spider-Man figures, this is from series two of the Spider-Man 2002 movie. This is the web swinging Spider-Man. So he swings on that little accessory there. I paid 60 for it. It's definitely on the pricey side, but it's just getting so hard to find the these in the packaging so definitely really cool and I had all of those figures growing up and it's cool to go back and try to get them all in the packaging again um, so with that being said also please excuse the fact that I'm filming this on my bed in my parents house uh, you know don't have my optimal setup like when I'm in Nashville Anyways, this was found after the con. Uh, I found this at the Flea Teak. This was only five bucks and they sell for about 30 on eBay. So the nice thing is when you find stuff like this, that extra profit can help pay for the rest of this stuff. So, you know, that's the cool thing about collecting. Anyways, everything you see here, I got from a bin that I didn't know it was $5, but I think I'm gonna have to go back tomorrow and do a little bit more digging. But this pirate Batman came from a book and this figure alone is more like a 12 or 13 dollar figure on bricklink so to pay five for it was a good deal um i probably overpaid for this one but i didn't have it yet 
probably overpaid for Catman, but he's really good for parts with those dull molded legs and everything. Definitely overpaid for this one, but he's from one of the um, blocks from Target. Like, there was a square where each side had a different minifig in it, and I really like those dull molded legs. The black and blue is unique, and the short blue sleeves are unique too, so... You know, I might have overpaid on that. I don't really know. Rockstar Batman, probably worth about five bucks. This Hulk here, uh, definitely a good get. He's more in the 15 to maybe even $20 range. Um, this is the Age of Ultron Toys R Us Polybag exclusive Hulk, and I really like him at minifig scale. I know not everybody does, but it is what it is. Um, we've got the Poolside Alfred here. He's really good for that balding headpiece for like J. Jonah Jameson Customs. The pig is definitely worth it. I did not look up how much this figure's worth, but the animal figures from the CMF generally are never worth less than 10 bucks. So again, at $5 was a good deal. Here we've got Robin from the Batman collectible minifig series. Not a great deal, but those short-sleeved arms are really great for making customs. And, uh, you know, I just figured it's good for having parts. Now, this is probably the most interesting find of the day. It's Count Dooku. No hairpiece, but hair is, hair piece is relatively common. But he's got, like, some white paint or something on his head. The guy sold this to me for $2 because the head is so messed up. So I figured, you know what, for $2, I'm going to try to experiment and get that off of there. Maybe some lighter fluid could help break that up. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to talk with some of my uh, other collecting buddies and see what they think. But... I don't know. For two bucks, it was just worth the gamble. Got an Aldrich Killian here with the wrong hairpiece, but that torso is always good for making customs like Stan Lee and stuff. So for three bucks, it wasn't bad. These were at the same booth, so I could just hand the guy a $5 bill and be on my merry way. Now, these are really, really cool. They came from a shop in Ohio. The guy didn't have a card, though. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't 100% remember his store's name. But I got these two white Ninjago ninjas in hopes to maybe use those pieces for a Moon Knight custom. I don't know. I'll experiment and see what happens. Here we've got Stas Ali. She was $25 on the pricey side, but she's one of the last Jedi minifigures that I need. And, um, you know, I'm going to have most of the Jedi minifigs Lego has ever made at this point. So that was definitely a welcome addition. These two here uh, were from the older X-Wing, so the X-Wing before last as of this video, and I got both of these for $25. Definitely a nice deal there. This was unique because this was the X-Wing helmet they tried out for a minute that uh, didn't print the visor on the eyes. It's actually a part of the helmet, and that head is going to be really good for a Freddie Mercury custom someday, maybe. Uh, let's see. I don't know which pilot this is. I just recognized that I didn't have that helmet, so I went ahead and picked him up for eight bucks. And Mutt Williams is always a good one from Indiana Jones because of his leather jacket, which at a five dollar figure, definitely worth picking up. Now, the best Lego find of the day was definitely this Watto. He only came in one set, Watto's Junkyard from 1999. And uh, I don't have him, and he really sells for a lot of money. Like, on BrickLink, I've seen him in the high 100s, all the way down to, like, $80 in used condition. Well, that being said, I got this for $80, and it's in beautiful condition, so it was definitely a good deal. And that's the haul from day one. Definitely a lot of unique stuff. You know, we got some Spider-Man, we got some Indiana Jones, we got some Lego. But uh, I'm excited to go back tomorrow and do a little more digging. So, yeah, we're going to call it a night here and see what we get into tomorrow hey guys just got here to steel city con i had to park about 17 miles away no exaggeration okay maybe a little bit but uh it's gonna be fun hope to beat the rain in and get started for a fun day too here at the con come on <laughs> Check out these awesome Lego Avengers magazines. I guess these come from Germany. They have a minifigure on the front. So this one's Spider-Man, this one's Venom. And uh, yeah, they're just really cool. Of course, they're all in German, so I can't really read them, but they are just phenomenal. Uh, man, this is just, who would have ever thought you'd find this in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania of all places? So cool. The minifigs aren't actually exclusive or anything. It's just a good cheap way to get them. And we don't have anything like this here in the States. So it's pretty awesome to see. So all of these are sealed and they've got plastic wrap on them too, which is really nice. Some really good stuff here. 
Gotta love these mini builds. And this one's kind of interesting. It's got a sticker on it. Might be an import or something like that. I don't know if I've ever seen one quite like that. Pretty cool. Well, that's a wrap on the con. It was a total blast. I had some great finds today. I can't wait to show you. Look at all these people probably in line to meet Chevy Chase. Anyways, headed off to lunch to go meet my mom and dad. Uh, that's one of the nice things about this con. Being in my old hometown is, you know, you get to take a little break and see mom and dad. Don't get to see them super, super often. And time with your parents is something that you can't buy more of. You can buy more toys, but you can't buy more time with your parents. So i uh, really looking forward to that. And I'm going to hit a toy store on the way over. So more hunting and more fun on the way. Now's as good a time of any to show you my car. I got this when I was in high school, uh, playing in my Beatles tribute band. Really fun days, maybe a story for another time, but now we're gonna check out the exchange. Lunch was awesome. I forgot to take very much video there, but you know, better to spend time with my parents anyways. I totally expect Tommy C. Brick's Lego No Way Home build to look exactly like this in scale and all. <laughs> and with that, Steel City Con and my toy hunting are over. Let me walk you through everything I got here. I found this really cool Spider-Man kite from the Tobey Maguire era, and I got it for $2. How cool was that? I almost want to open it, but I can't take it out of the package. I just can't bring myself to do it. Um, at the con, I also found this Doc Ock action figure from Spider-Man 3. When you push his legs together, the claws close. Well, they're supposed to. Anyways, I got this for $5, and they go for about $30 to $40 on eBay, even with the uh, claws on the bottom missing. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, you guys saw I stopped at that place called The Exchange, where I got this Invisible Woman figure. It actually really does look like Jessica Alba. It's actually a really good figure, and uh, I guess I'm getting into collecting these again. I had these as a kid. Oh, well, couldn't say no for 15 bucks. Speaking of good deals from that store, I found this Elvis Presley Hound Dog 45. This is what music used to come on, just these little uh, vinyl discs. But anyways, this was $6. This is an original one from 1956. How could I leave that behind for only $6? Got some Lego minifigs here. All of these were $3 a piece. All of them are CMFs too. We've got the Spy that have uh, really good legs for making customs. This weightlifter guy, I don't know. I just thought he was a good deal for three bucks. This guy's a good deal with the crutches for three bucks. And then of course the Chef is a good deal for three because she has those printed arms with the cufflinks. Those can be really good for like, you know, kingpin customs or whatever. Um, here we've got some vintage Indiana Jones uh, figures. So this is Belloc. All of these are from Raiders of the Lost Ark from about 1983 or so. And um, these are very rare. The Indiana Jones figures did not historically sell very well. In fact, they didn't even in 2008 when they uh, came out again. But these ones are pretty valuable because they're just rare and vintage now. Marion, obviously being the most expensive of them, she's just very hard to find. Uh, she didn't sell it particularly well. Um, not as well as like, you know, Indiana Jones himself or whatever. But the other thing is, is uh, all the figures came one to a box. So, you know, there's an equal amount of them out there. But I don't know, for whatever reason, Marion is more expensive. It's not a perfect figure. She's got some paint chipping on her nose and chin, but they still go for about $200 even in that condition on eBay as of this video. So uh, it was really cool. I got all of those for $240, and I only need a couple more Indiana Jones pieces to have a complete vintage collection. Speaking of vintage, at least vintage Spider-Man, I found this insane automatic pop-up standee. It's 24 inches by 12 inches. I have never seen this before. In a quick search on eBay, nothing came up for it. But there's four total, one of which is this really cool green goblin. But uh, it's actually sealed. If you look, you could see that it's glued underneath there. So I don't know. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. But um, I paid 30 for it, and it's just weird enough that I couldn't leave it there. Then, as far as strange Lego finds today, I got this really cool German magazine. Really, really awesome from uh, a friend of mine at the show. I'll put some info right here about his shop. But anyways, 
This is a German magazine. I don't know if you guys remember, I covered that poster a while back on the channel, like two years ago. But anyways, it has a minifig poly bag of Spider-Man on here. It's a common Spider-Man figure, but when we open it up, there's like all kinds of games and stuff inside. I'm actually going to do a review on this whole magazine in the future, but it's cool to leaf through now. And that's the haul, guys. It was really fun. I always love coming to Steel City Con because it's in my hometown. It's always good to see my folks and, uh, you know, visit the old stomping grounds. But, you know, as I like to say in these videos, you can buy all the toys, you can buy all the plastic you want at these shows, but the real memories are, you know, making memories with your friends and, in this case, my family and just having a great time. So let me know what you guys thought of this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me. I am ending the weekend as one grateful dude, and I am so excited to get to the next con. Well, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and maybe check out one of my other videos listed here.